So in today's video, I will discuss how to create beautiful outdoor one light dramatic portraits using an ultra wide lens and at the same time show you how I created these images. So hi everyone, this is Jiggy, a portrait and wedding photographer from the Philippines and welcome to the channel. So in today's video, I'm taking you behind the scenes once again during an actual engagement shoot and show you how to create beautiful dramatic portraits using an ultra wide lens and just one single light. I will do that by a few behind the scenes clips that I was able to take during the time that I was shooting and at the same time, maybe interject some thoughts throughout the way, okay? So here goes. So I actually enjoyed shooting that with my 50, but now I decided I think I'm going to shoot it with a 16 to 35. So you heard me mention that I shot a few layouts using my 50 millimeter. Now if you want to see the output of that, I'll put the link in the description below. So we're going to go ultra wide and just make this even more dramatic. But I like the movement, I like them running, and it seems that the bride, um, um, Ruby, really has a knack for running and her hair just flows really well. So we're going to do it here and we're gonna shoot it ultra wide and see how it turns out. And of course, still with my Potix Indra 500, with a Raja 60, and this hand with just a Potix Odin Light. So the trigger that I was using was my Photix Odin Light. This Photix Odin Light is a non-TTL trigger. The TTL trigger was actually attached to my other camera that had the 50mm because that time I was shooting at 1.2 so I needed to go on high speed sync. So this particular trigger, as I said, does not go on high speed sync even if my flash is capable of doing that. So I needed to stay within my flash sync speed which is about 1 over 200 for this particular trigger. I also mentioned that my Photix Raja D 60 the modifier that I was using was double diffuse this is a 60 cm deep octa box and the modifier had a diffuser in the middle or inside the box and another diffuser outside to give really really nice soft light and what is my settings gonna be well I'm gonna be a shutter speed priority I'll set my shutter speed at 1 over 200 the aperture will probably be about maybe about give or take f4 to 5.6 that's how it's gonna go and my flash will be at full power but i think this is gonna be too powerful so most likely at one fourth but jeff remind me later to tell you the exact setting of my flash all right So you guys saw what I did there actually. Um, if you guys are not familiar with the channel and this is the first video that you've actually seen, I always make it a point if I want movement shots or running shots, I don't actually make them run. What I do is I make them take one step as if they were running because I want to to maintain the, the composition that I want. And at the same time, if they have to keep running back and forth, it's gonna be very tiring for them. And number two, I'm actually leaving it to luck. So I'd rather not be lucky and try to control whatever it is that I'm going to shoot. And by just making them jump forward, pretend as if they were running, I'm able to control the situation a bit more. I can tell them where to look on what I need to improve in the next layout or in the next shot. So here is the straight out of the camera image from that particular layout. And all I really needed to do was shift my white balance and make it a bit warmer and put a bit of vignette and basically that's it. So from there, we moved on to another layout. So instead of making them run this time, I decided to make them get into an intimate pose just facing each other, always making sure that I am shooting the correct side of the bride. So the bride right now is on the left side of the frame because her angle is on the right side. And also one thing to remember, whenever you're shooting with a 16 to 35 lens, you're actually prone to distortion. But distortion is good if you want to do an ultra wide shot because it makes it look epic. However, you don't want to distort your subjects. So that's why I try to keep them at center of the frame because that is the one that receives the least amount of distortion. One. 
So you heard me say there in Tagalog, hintayin natin na malakas yung alon. In other words, I was waiting for the waves to become stronger. In other words, I wanted the dynamic look of instead of just the clouds streaking, but rather the waves moving. And I wanted to catch it at a certain point that it hits them and goes over or maybe going back. So it really depends. I was just really playing around with it. Of course, the waves we can't control. This is where an element of luck is very, very important. And as you can see also, I actually had my light really far back already with just a general direction of light towards them just so that we can get a good illumination on the subjects. So it does really take some trial and error, especially with things that you can't control. But for me personally, I felt that it really added an element that I wanted in the image. So I stuck with it and that's why I kept on shooting and hopefully get that perfect wave. If not, I since I did not have a tripod with me, I basically tried to shoot it from the same angle most of the time and didn't want to move my camera up and down too much the moment I found the angle that I wanted to shoot in because Eventually, I will get one perfect wave and one not so perfect wave and I can put it together to make it look like really that perfect wave that I was looking for. So this is how that one turned out. There you go. So it's just a series of photographs, getting the perfect wave, getting the perfect timing. And I'll probably make this a bit warmer in post. And then my settings for 1 over 200 f6.3, my flash was at full power. You see, I had my flash a bit far away. That's why I needed to be at full power. And this is a double diffused light. So you heard me mention about what I plan to do in post afterwards. That's one important thing that I actually want to share with you guys is that whenever I am shooting, if I know that there will be a little bit of post-production that's needed, I already know ahead of time what I'm going to be doing. It's not like I'm going to shoot the shot and say, when I get to my computer, I'll say, oh, it might look better this way or this way or this way. Everything is still thought of even before I take that shutter from the fact of where my light is, how I'm going to shoot it and how I'm going to process it also afterwards. The image that you're seeing now is my ambient light exposure without any flash. You guys may ask, what is my ambient light exposure? To be honest, it is really per taste. It depends on how strong your existing ambient light is. But for me, rule of thumb, about one stop under exposed of your ambient light was always going to be good. Plus, it allows me to actually save my highlights and at the same time, I don't have too, my shadows too dark that when I try to recover it, it's going to be grainy. I just want to keep it within that, you know, that sweet spot of the dynamic range of the camera. That's why it's very important that you guys actually know what your camera is capable of doing even when it comes to post-production. Now, this is the shot with light. You could see that I had really nice movement in the waves already. However, I felt that this area here was pretty blank. And for me, the colors were still a bit too dry and too dull. That's why in the final processed image, I just warmed up the colors. And as I said earlier, I had multiple shots with multiple waves. So all I needed to do was just fill up this area here, right here with another image that I took about a few seconds before this one. So that's normally what I do when I want to create dramatic ultra wide outdoor portraits with just one light. The first thing that I do is I make sure that I expose from my existing ambient light. Normally I like having it about one stop under. Afterwards, I will position my subject at center of frame just so that I don't distort them. Sometimes if I'm shooting a bride with a really nice gown, I would distort the front of the gown or the back of the gown, sorry. I would distort the back of the gown to make it even bigger and it creates leading lines towards the subject. And then lastly, the most important thing after, of course, you've, you've positioned your flash, but positioning your flash is per taste on how where you want to do it. But the most important thing for me is that it's pre-visualization. Before you even take the shot, you already know how you're gonna expose for it, you know how you're gonna compose, and you know how you're gonna process it, okay? So if you guys have any questions with regards to this video, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, subscribe to the channel, like this video, and click that notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. Now, if you have want to see some more of my images, you could always find me on Instagram. It's at Jiggy Alejandrino. 
okay till the next video